Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to talk about a useful way of understanding consumer surplus, producer surplus and deadweight loss. In particular I'm going to link these concepts to the notion of trade. So in other videos I've described consumer surplus as the difference between the marginal benefit of consumption and the price, the producer surplus as the difference between the price and the marginal cost of production, and dead weight loss in other videos I'll often describe it as the difference in total surplus as we move away from the efficient level of production, uh, which is the outcome that we most commonly associate with perfect competition. And that's all fine, these ways of thinking about welfare analysis are, are perfectly good. In this video, I wanted to link these concepts to just the idea of trade. And I think this gives us a, a more rudimentary understanding of what's happening with these concepts. So let's think about trade in the following way. Trade is possible if the marginal benefit of consumption, so that's the benefit in monetary terms that the consumer gets from consumption. Well, if that's greater than or equal to the marginal cost of production. And if the price lies between or on these points. So as an example, let's say I value a pizza at $10. So that's my marginal benefit of consumption, but it only costs the producer $5 to make. Then we can trade if the price lies between or on $5 and $10. We can show all of this visually like this, we have our marginal benefit at the top, that's 10, marginal cost at the bottom. And so price can be anywhere between or on these points. Once we do have an appropriate price, let's say for just for illustration, $9.50 for the pizza, we can break up that trade into consumer and producer surplus. So for consumer surplus, we take the difference between the marginal benefit of consumption and the price. So that's 10 minus 9.5, so 50 cents. We can think about it like this. The consumer was willing to pay up to $10 uh, or they get $10 worth of benefit from that consumption, but they only had to pay $9.50, so they get 50 cents surplus. To find our producer surplus, we take the price minus the marginal cost of production so 9.5 minus 5, so 4.5. We can think about the producer surplus in the following way. It only cost the producer $5 to make this pizza, but they got $9.50, so they get $4.50 extra, some surplus, right? The total surplus available from this trade will just be the difference between marginal benefit and marginal cost, so 10 minus 5, so 5. And we can see the price is determining how that total surplus is divided between our producers and consumers. The price of $9.50 gave us an outcome where the producer was doing much better than the consumer because the price was pretty high. If the price was lower, however, maybe $6, the consumer would get $4 of that possible total surplus and the producers would only get $1. As the price gets higher, more of that total surplus goes to the producer. It's quite straightforward to extend this understanding of producer and consumer surplus to our market diagrams. All we would need to do is find our marginal cost curve, our marginal benefit curve and the price. We take the difference between the marginal benefit curve and the price for all units consumed and that would be our consumer surplus. We take the difference between the price and the marginal cost curve for all units produced, and that would be our producer surplus. So just as an example, let's say we're talking about perfect competition and we have this diagram here. Our supply curve tracks our marginal cost of production. Our demand curve tracks our marginal benefit of consumption. Now, the first thing to note that in this case, you can see that for all units up to Q star, the marginal benefit, so I'm tracing it out in green, well, that's above marginal cost. And so we know from the discussions before, when marginal benefit is higher than marginal cost, trade is possible as long as the price lies between these limits. In fact, in this case, the market price in perfect competition, so P star, uh, is such that it allows for all of these trades to happen, right? To find our consumer surplus, then we take the difference between our marginal benefit and our price. So that would be this area here. For our producer surplus, we take the difference between our price and marginal cost, so that would be here. So that's our consumer surplus and producer surplus, uh, you know, connected to this idea of trade and really this idea that the price, you know, divides up that total surplus uh, either to the consumers or the producers. 
Let's now think about connecting dead weight loss to this discussion. And let's carry on the example where the marginal benefit of consumption was 10 and the marginal cost was equal to 5. Now, imagine if this trade did not happen. So there was some interference or some circumstance that meant that there was no trade, even though our marginal benefit was higher than marginal cost. Well, this would mean that we would lose out on the possibility of that surplus. And if you recall, the total possible surplus was was five. So we would lose out by five. This would be bad for the allocation of our scarce resources because there was potential surplus here that wasn't realized. So economists refer to this situation, you know, if this trade did not happen as allocative inefficiency. And this loss in potential surplus, uh, we'll call that dead weight loss. So if this trade didn't happen, our dead weight loss would be five. Alternatively, imagine if the numbers were reversed and the marginal benefit of consumption was five and the marginal cost was 10, but somehow trade still happened. So we traded even when the marginal cost, the cost was higher than the benefit. This would also create dead weight loss, that's allocative inefficiency, because we're producing even when the costs are higher than the benefits. And that's, again, just not a great outcome if we're thinking about how to allocate our scarce resources. And what I've done here is that I've tried to frame our dead weight loss as an issue of allocation. In order to be perfectly efficient, we need to exhaust all production where marginal benefit is greater than or equal to marginal cost, because then either the consumer or producer can get some surplus, and we should not produce if the marginal cost is higher than the marginal benefit, because that would be allocating our scarce resources to production where costs are higher than benefits. And so dead weight loss here is about producing exactly the right amount. In the rest of the video, I'll refer to that amount that satisfies these conditions as QE for like the efficient quantity. That's um, allocatively efficient. From this understanding of deadweight loss, it's quite easy to isolate deadweight loss in circumstances that can seem tricky to students. So let's consider this diagram here, which shows a tax on producers. I do have another video on taxes. I think I've got a few actually that can help you if you're confused about this diagram. I'll link to it in the description below. In this video, I just want to illustrate how to find deadweight loss uh, in kind of seemingly tricky situations. Briefly, the tax artificially increases the marginal cost of production. So we use supply plus tax when we look at the market outcome, that curve there. The price that consumers pay is here, PC. The price that producers get is here, that's PP. The quantity traded, uh, I've called it Q star, that's there. And again, there's a lot to say about taxes, but let's just think about deadweight loss. Now to find my deadweight loss, I need to find where marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost. Because at that point, that's going to be our allocatively efficient uh, trading amount, that's QE. So using my demand to tell me about marginal benefit and supply to tell me about marginal cost, well, QE will be here where those two curves meet. And that's where we really should produce if we want to exhaust all of the trade where marginal benefit is greater than or equal to marginal cost. And, you know, we don't want to ever produce where marginal cost is greater than marginal benefit. The second thing we're going to do is find the level of production that occurs in the market. Um, I, I referred to it before, that's just going to be Q star. The last thing we're going to do is just have a look what's happening between these two quantities. Let's look at marginal benefit and marginal cost between these two quantities. So if we trace out our marginal benefit, we can see that for the quantities in between or past Q star up to QE, we can see that the marginal benefit is higher than the marginal cost, but the market has only produced Q star. So we failed to produce uh, because of the tax. As we said before, this is a bad situation. This is going to lead to dead weight loss. So we shade in that space between our marginal benefit and marginal cost curves, and that's, that's our dead weight loss. So let's think about another diagram. Let's think about a subsidy. Again, I have other videos that can help you with understanding uh, subsidies if you need it. Let's just think about dead weight loss. 
Our supply curve still tracks marginal cost. Our demand curve tracks marginal benefit. The subsidy essentially artificially pushes out our marginal benefit curve uh, to demand plus subsidy. Consumers pay this price, producers get this price, and QSTAR is traded. If I follow my steps that I have to the left, let's first find QE, that's where marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost, and that's going to be here. Now to step two, we find where the market produces, that's here at QSTAR, and in this case, the quantity produced by the market is higher than QE. So the market is essentially overproducing. Again, just looking at that last step, let's look between those two quantities. You can see that the marginal cost of production is higher than the marginal benefit for all of these units between QE and Q star, but the market is producing these units where costs are higher than benefits, and that's where our inefficiency comes in. And that's that's really the problem with the subsidy, is that it's it's given us this, a false sense of the marginal benefit associated with the con consumption, um, you know, with that pushing out of the demand curve uh, artificially. All right, so that's it. That's uh, linking our producer surplus, consumer surplus and dead weight loss to just this more fundamental idea of trade. I hope that the video helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. I hope you guys are, are doing well and keeping safe and happy.